Hey, what's up? This is Laid Back Luke, DJ and producer, Kung Fu athlete, and family guy. Thank you very much for all the comments about the previous vlog of what a DJ does throughout the week. I think you guys made an excellent choice, and especially for you, I have the tutorial that you've been waiting for. I will be taking you through the five fundamental steps on how to learn producing. If you are an experienced producer, I suggest skip this vlog because we're really gonna talk about basics and fundamentals here. Now, most of the time, a lot of people start out way too complicated. So they'll learn how to program synths or how to make textures and sounds and learn about compression and reverb and mastering. And this is all upside down. To learn how to drive a car, you don't need to know how an engine functions. You first need to learn how to drive. So here we are in Ableton. It's my DAW of choice, and this is something I would recommend to all of you just starting out. What you first need to do is get out of this live performance screen by hitting tab, and you'll dive into the producer section of Ableton straight away. So load in your favorite track. I'm just gonna load in my newest track. And then mind you, the BPM over here needs to correspond with the BPM over here. What you need to have over here is just one warp marker. Especially with electronic music, there is a consistent tempo and all of these can make the tempo very inconsistent. So we're gonna select all of these and then just delete. And when you click it, you see the tempo is, well, I know the track is 129 BPM, so I'm just gonna change that. 29. But then I'll need to change this as well, 129. Now I'm gonna make sure with the click over here, this is the metronome. Okay, so that's good. That means the track is on the grid. I'm just gonna move it, move the whole thing here to one. Whenever I click on the grid, it's correct. And now here comes the magic. I can cut in the track and rearrange. And this is what you do with an edit. For instance, maybe you think the intro is a little bit long. You know what? Let's make it 15 seconds longer. So I'm just gonna make a cut here, which I use Command E. And if I move it, five, six, seven, eight, but I'll need to fill it up with another eight. So I'm just gonna choose this eight, Command D. Now the intro is 15 seconds longer. So on the end, you hear a little bit of a fade towards the first break. You might just want to fix that. So I'm just going to take this piece and with Command D, copy it until here. So now you won't have this problem over here. You don't need all these vocals here. So I'm going to make another cut and then I'm just going to... So everything you select and you do Command Shift X, you will crunch it together, like this. Bam. And maybe you want to give it an extra four counts before it drops. Okay, so with a simple select and command I of insert, you insert four counts. And I'm just gonna command D, that stands for duplicate. And now the countdown before the drop is four measures longer. Hear this. And you can get as freaky and as funky as you want with it. So basically right now I can call this the laid back look edit. And that's what you want to get familiar with the program. So a mashup is combining two tracks into one track, and most of the time it just involves putting an a cappella over an existing instrumental. Oh, you know what? Let's do rocking with the best, that's fun. The rocking with the best a cappella is not the same BPM as my promiscuous instrumental. Most of the time with a cappellas, it happens that the BPM doesn't show or the BPM is totally wrong. Now, how can I solve this? I'll just look up the original track, put it in the project and see what BPM will show up right here? 128. 
So when you're in your acapella, you could actually change this to any BPM you want. So 128. So because it knows the original BPM and it's warped, it'll automatically change it to the BPM of the current project. Now we're just gonna need to make sure the acapella is on beat. So I know in this case, the, the one of the acapella is on the yes. I'm just gonna move the yes to the one here. Yes, do well in that rock you. Oh yes, but look what is happening with the master here. Now to solve this, you only need to put a limiter and preferably a good limiter on your master output. So my favorite transparent limiter is the Fab Filter Pro L. And with this on, you will see right here, the master stays green. So you can layer and it doesn't matter. Now with your experience in editing, you can get as funky as you want with this. I can get funky with the EQ on the track as well. I'm just gonna take out a bunch of frequencies. And here you can automate this. To make it fun and funky. Let me see, here. And as simple as that, now you get a little bit more knowledge of some EQ, some limiting, some extra editing, and there's your mashup. Mind you, a bootleg is not a remix. If you are lucky, you can just Google blah blah a cappella, and you can come across the a cappella, but usually there's no stems. So this means in bootlegging, you need to get really creative with it. I'm gonna work with my promiscuous track again, but this time I'm gonna make a 115 BPM bootleg, how about that? So the track is slower now, but it, it gets very jittery. You can prevent this by simply going under warp, look at the beat section here, make the beats complex. The warping will become way smoother. The essence to bootlegging is to finally incorporate your own flavor into it. So your own beats, your own synths. So I'm just gonna program a kick drum here. Command Shift M is a new MIDI track. And I'm just gonna load in LBL kick, how about that? And I'm just gonna program it into here. Command 2 to make this grid bigger. So I can program it correctly. Command B for a pencil tool. And I'm just gonna make this loopy thing here shorter. So I have a kick drum on all the measures right now. Because I looped it, I can stretch the kick drum out right now. And it'll just be great. So now it gets a little bit more complicated on the master because with a limiter I need to add a compressor and I will need to take the volume back a little bit for it to not distort. Let me just put a Ableton compressor here. Let's make it smooth. And I'm gonna take the volume going into my so-called new master chain back so it has a little bit of space to breathe. So now how do I fit this little piece into the kick drum? Because right now it doesn't really gel. You just take a compressor and you just make it a side chain. Side chain, that means it will need an input from the kick drum. It'll need a certain threshold to make that wavy type of feel. Let's make it a little drier. And there's the gel. EQ it because you learned how to EQ when you 
we're mashing up. So a little less bass. So with your mashup knowledge, we could make a few cuts here. So cut it here. Command J is merging the audio so it'll become its own little snippet. Just gonna reverse this. Reverse. For fun, just gonna quickly add like a Mumba tone kind of snare in here. Just the snare, let's see. Remember how to make a MIDI track? Command Shift M. Now I can program it here. Make the grid bigger. And do a kabunki. Kum. Kabunki snare. So you will start to work with synths when you start making bootlegs. Just work with presets. It's okay, I'll show you. Presets. Let's look into the leads. Let's grab a big lead. And what you do with the preset to make it your own sound is just tweak it. Okay, so I don't like the delay on it. No reverb. Distortion, maybe it needs more distortion. See, now it's your own preset, and I tweaked three knobs. Okay, maybe a little bit less. Maybe I don't like the wow. Or do I? Okay, so there's your preset. Very simple, you don't need to make a sound from scratch. This is a unique sound, and we're gonna use it. And again, here as well, you can go into EQing. Obviously, there's enough tutorials about EQing and making synths and, and adding stuff. I'm gonna put a little side chain on here as well, just to gel it with the kick drum, same story. So obviously arrange it, work with climaxes, maybe take a few snippets from the drop, and there's your bootleg. Which means you are ready for remixing now. So if you're working on a real remix, usually the original artist will ask you to do the remix. A lot of times it's for money, and in return, you get the full stems of the track. You get the a cappella, you get the melodies, you get everything separate. And basically, you don't really need to be that creative just to take out all the elements you want from the original and make it your own. Now, you really need to make your own structure, your own climaxes. Usually, it's about 75% of your own sound, your own beats, versus a 25% of the original. After that, you even need to get into mastering, next level arranging, and by the time you reach the real remixing level, you will have gained a lot of knowledge on how to produce and how to solve a lot of producer problems. Now there's enough producer tutorials out there to help you with this. You can dive into creating your own sounds, learning how certain synths work, learn about mastering. I did a vlog on that as well. Learn how to mix, learn how to engineer. So don't worry about it if this will take you at least five years until you have developed all of this and your whole sound. But what's important to me is how you start it and that you have fun with it, that you wrestle a bit with it, and that along the way you come across some problems, you solve them, you learn from them, and then take it to the next level. Not all at once. So there it is, the five fundamentals on how to properly start learning producing.
If you like this vlog, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Next week, I'm gonna introduce you to the Mixmash team and I'll be taking you out to Madrid as well, where I'm gonna test out some new Mixmash tracks and see how it goes. Until next time, L's up, rave safely, and salute. Thank <laughs> you.